Welcome to Specific Love. In a previous video, I made this awesomely simple router table that works great for me. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll make sure to put a link in the description so you can go check that out. Now, this right here works great. I've used it many times and I've, I don't have any complaints about it, except for what it sits on. Now, I used an old shelf, converted this over, and it's just a simple metal shelf, and it works great for what it is. I just have a feeling that the metal struts and frame structure won't be able to handle any additional weight if I go to upgrade this. So, for this video, we're gonna be upgrading this router table to a much heavier duty router station. Let's begin. First, I started by measuring the old table because I plan on keeping the top to transfer it over to the new setup. I then started to cut some 2x4s for the frame. To keep the boards the same length, I just used the first cut as a template for the next. I then took the boards over to the belt sander to remove some of the burrs created by the miter saw. Using the top of the table, I laid out each of the boards to check the alignment, and actually had to adjust the inner supports to compensate for the position of the router base. I then set up my pocket hole jig and drilled four holes in each board. These pocket holes made it easy to assemble and gave the frame a bunch of strength. After using this old table for a while, I do like the height of it, so I'm going to try and get the new one to roughly the same height. And to get that, counting the casters, it's going to be about 40 inches, so I'm going to have to aim for that for the new one. But before I created the legs, I needed a bottom frame. So I decided to mirror the top just in case I wanted to add future supports or additional pieces later. For the casters, I went with some heavy duty locking versions that had a total height of about 4 inches. These should be able to handle by anything that I wanted to add to this table. I then added some additional 2x4s across the bottom of the frame to support the casters. I then cut out and attached some vertical support legs. I used several screws in each to help prevent movement in any direction. And with a quick weight test, I was convinced they would hold well. It was now time to attach the tabletop to the top frame. And to keep this simple, I used a screw in each corner just in case I needed to remove or replace it in the future. I also made sure to countersink each screw to keep the top as smooth as possible. I then slid the top onto the support legs making sure they rested flush with each one before securing everything in place with several more screws. I might be using a few too many screws than what is needed, but I wanted everything to be 100% secure. And here's what the basic setup looks like. Now the basic frame of our bench and router table is complete. It is very, very sturdy in fact. I'm not at all concerned about this thing breaking at all. It can handle a bunch of tools, which I plan on adding some stuff in the future. And overall, I'm very well pleased. I got a few more extras. Let's get on to those. Now if you've ever used a router table before, you know there is a lot of debris and wood filings that fall down underneath and just create a large mess. So I'm going to make a little housing here so we can hopefully collect some of that into a smaller area. I then took some measurements to determine where I wanted to add some support legs. I cut two more boards, added some pocket holes, and secured them to the frame. I went on the sides of the existing boards to give my router a little more clearance when adjusting the height and changing the bits. And as usual, I added a lot of screws. Then measuring for the router clearance, I determined the best location for the bottom of the box and cut those boards as well. And as you probably guessed, I added pocket holes to those too. Once in place, they looked like a little overkill, but I would never have to worry about them breaking. I then added a support rail to the bottom of two sides so I would not have to cut the bottom panel. I had an old piece of quarter inch MDF that I decided to use as a bottom and inner panel and cut them to size on the table saw. I then flipped the table on its side and added the base of the box. And while the table was on its side, I decided to add two additional 2x4s for strength and to support the shelving I would add later. I then flipped the table back upright and added the inner board. I next cut down some quarter inch plywood to finish off the rest of the box. I also think the plywood looks better than adding MDF completely around the box. Next up was adding a door so I could access the router. So I added some simple hinges to one side of the plywood. And the other side, I wanted a hook latch. I did not have any on hand, so I modified another type of hook to pivot on a small piece of 2x4 that I gently attached to the plywood. And it turned out better than I planned. And for the bottom shelving, I cut down some half inch MDF into three separate pieces, and then used a jigsaw to cut out the corners. 
I chose to have them sit lower than the bottom frame so I could utilize that extra space. And it worked out great with adding several of my tools for storage. Next up was adding a large safety switch to the table. This was an afterthought for the table, so I needed to add a support board to hold the switch. I cut out a 2x4 to support a box and found a good location. I then cut a new extension cord and fed it through a hole I drilled up under the table. I carefully wired everything up and secured it in place. Now I am not an electrician, so I was a little nervous for the first test. Now here comes a moment of truth to see if I wired it correctly. Forgot to turn it on. Alright, now the moment of truth to see if I wired this correctly. Now I hope you enjoyed this build. I really do love this new router station. I can use it as that or use it as a workbench or pretty much a storage or anything else for that matter. I love how I can collect most of the debris that falls out of the router from the bottom and catches it in this box. But I do have some future plans to hook up a nice dust collection system, so make sure you keep an eye out for that video. But overall, I'm very happy. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you click the like button. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. And as always, have fun building.